what if they're all terrible? What if everybody gave them five stars and I'm like, trash? Hey, what's up? Hello, it's Katie. And I'm going to do a video that I'm so excited about, like so, so, so excited about. I had already planned on doing a five star predictions video, but then when I did my August TBR, I asked my best friend Grace to film a little clip of her watching my TBR, which is the shelf in my bedroom of all the books that I haven't read and say, I want you to pick out three of these books that you want me to read in August. And when she ended up sending the video back to me, which I'm going to show you in a second, she was like, oh, this is what, this is rated on Goodreads. And like, she looked up all these reviews and people that I knew that read them. And I was like, wow, she really went in depth. Like she actually did the research. And I was like, okay, so not only do I think I'm going to love them, but she's also telling me that they're like the highest rated books on my TBR. Love that. And they were books that she was like, I want to read these. I think they sound amazing. Let's see what you think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll into showing you the clip that she sent me that I reacted to. If you haven't already seen it in my August TBR, I'm going to show you that these are the books that Grace picked out for me for this video. Okay. So the first book that I was like, hands down, this one has to go on the list. I'm dying to know if it's good. It has over 4.5 stars on Goodreads is it they never and learn? Barnes and Noble, and it has over 4.8 stars. At I feel like she's gonna million, pick. They never learn. But it's Gideon the Ninth. Oh, I'm, like, I'm dying to know if it's good. It has the craziest, like wildest concept. The next one was They Never Learn. I want to know if that one's good too. That one also had, I think, 4.5 stars. It was definitely over four stars on Goodreads and Barnes and Noble. I was between two for the last one. And I think what I ended up eventually settling on was Ace of Spades because I remember when you got that one or when we were reorganizing your bookshelf and that one was just not vibing with the color of the rest of your books. And I read the, um, like the synopsis on the back and it sounded really interesting to me too. So do with that what you will. Love you. As you can see, a glowing success. Like she clearly has taste. These are all books that I was already planning on doing a reading vlog for because I'm very excited to read them. Like so, so, so pumped. And I wanna know if they're gonna stand up to the hype of not only the book community, but also the hype I have also given it. Like I look at these books and I'm like, five stars. I haven't even read them yet. Are they good? I have no idea. I think I'm gonna like They Never Learn the Best then Ace of Spades, and then Gideon the Ninth. I don't really have a reason for saying that. This is just the vibe that I'm getting. Let's see if I'm right. Hey, it's the first day of this reading vlog. And the first book that I want to pick up is Ace of Spades. Want to is not what I should say. Okay, I really desperately want to read this. But the reason why I'm picking it up first is because I have to. Because my Libby hold is expiring rapidly. Whew. Oh my god, I think I have like a day and a half to two days left to read this. It says two days, but usually it's not like the entire two days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to the audio and try to get that experience. I feel like I've heard it's a good audio. And what I'm going to do is for the next two days, not speed read it, but just listen to it whenever I can. And then however far I get into it, I'll just physically read the rest of the book. You know what I'm saying? I am not going to tell you what it's about yet. Other than that, I've heard it's like if Gossip Girl and Get Out had a baby. I'm already obsessed. I'm obsessed. Grace said that she looked up the reviews on this and that she saw a lot of people that I really admire and love have rated this five stars. She said all of them have rated it five stars, which I was like, what? She said that the Goodreads ratings in general are like a 4.5 or something, which is astronomical. And she said that the synopsis sounded really, really good. And she wanted me to read it. And she was like, once you get a couple chapters in, just like text me and tell me if it's good and I'll go get the audio. <laughs> I was like... Okay, so we might be buddy reading this. I don't know. Um, I'm going to put on some makeup for work and listen to the audio. Uh, if I can get a grasp of what the book is about, then I'll hit you up. Um, or maybe just with a reaction. I don't know. I'm only on page 10. 
It's too early to say this, but I love it. I love it. I love the writing. Like we've only, we're only in the first chapter. I'm on page 10 and I'm listening to it really slowly, which I'm listening to it like 1.8, which for me is literally slow as shit because this guy talks super slow, but I really want to digest the story and I'm trying to get myself to not listen to books so fast because I have a problem with that. But he just reads like such a real person. Like he reads like a real teenager. And I love that. And there's a moment where he sees a teacher and he was like talking about the way she's dressed. And it says, oh, it makes her look like Edna from The Incredibles. And I was like, stop, stop. That's, that's hilarious. Ugh. I'm loving it so far. I know that's too early to say that, but it's really good. Oh my God. It's so good so far. I'm only on like page 30 and it's fantastic. It's so good. Oh my God. Oh my God. And like, whoo, shocking. We're running in at like breakneck speed to this book. It's fantastic. It's so good. Oh my God. So basically what I can surmise so far is that it is about uh, this uh, boy Devon and this girl Chiamaka and they get chosen to be like the prefix of their school. And the girl Chiamaka is like, yeah, obviously, because she is super popular and she's like going to be the valedictorian. And she's been trying her whole like life to become this person. But Devon is like, oh, wait, why is everybody looking at me? Like I fade into the background. I'm smart, but nobody's supposed to know that. Like, you sick. I hate all popular things. Like get the f away from me. I hate it. So he doesn't know why he was chosen and they both get picked and basically like <laughs> they both have secrets and they are juicy oh my god they're juicy and there is like basically like a gossip girl situation where there's this character or person or whatnot that goes by aces that uh texts the entire student body and outs them on these secrets that they have and when i tell you these secrets are juicy they're so juicy i just got to chiamaka secret and i'm like <gasps> what? Ah, so good. Okay. I need to go to work, but I'm loving it. Am I getting out of a reading slump? Yeah, but I feel like it's gonna put me right back in it because I'm 50% of the way in. I know that I only have like, it said two days, but this like at midnight, can't tell, it's like 12.33. At midnight, it should have lapsed for the audio and it hasn't. So I feel like I might have a couple more hours. I don't know, but I got 49% of the way in. Doesn't look like it. It, feel, it looks like I'm only like 45, I don't know. But I got 49% of the way in and Oh my God. Like, I'm surprised that I got that far into the audiobook, And that's why I'm saying like, is my slump over? I don't know, but I am obsessed. I'm obsessed. This is so good. And like something that I really like in a book is when I get the feeling of, I don't trust none of these hoes. None of them. No, no. these hoes, they ain't loyal. I'm gonna tell you that. But I'm like, is this what a Scorpio feels like all the time? Because I swear to God, Every single character in this book, every single thing that happens, I'm like, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. I don't trust you. What'd you just do? I don't trust you. I don't trust whatever you just did. No, nothing. Absolutely nothing. I swear to God. It could be anybody. Anybody? Are they presenting as a friend? I don't trust you. A girlfriend? A boyfriend? I don't trust you. Brother? Sister? Cousin? I don't care. Who are you? I don't trust you. I don't trust you. Who are you? What is your motives? What is your motives, good sir? Lady? They're like, she's blonde. I'm like, I don't trust her. I don't trust her. They're like, oh, it's his cousin. I don't trust him. I don't trust him. Mm -mm, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And it's like that eerie, untrustworthy. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm like reading this book and anything will happen. Literally anything. And I'm like, I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> it's like literally that's how it's like the get out of Gossip Girl. Like it's in this freaking high school. They're just like, I want to be the Valley Victorian. But then it's like that eeriness. 
of Get Out, and then also the eeriness of there's just too many white people in this fucking town. There's too many fucking white people. It's scary. It is fucking scary. And I swear to God, Chiamaka, wake up, bitch. Hello? Is anybody in there? Because she is not thinking that this is racially charged at all. I love her. But hello? She needs to wake up. Devon, he's with it. Or he's getting more with it. Love him. Love her. I love it. I love it so much. I'm going to really hope that I get a couple more hours of this audio in tomorrow before the hold runs out. Like, I'm absolutely going to read the rest of it physically, no doubt. But the audiobook is really good. Like, I really love it. I will warn you that the guy narrator, Devon, literally talks so glacially slow. Like, I get it. Like, I get that it is, like, a character trait of his. But, oh, my God. Your God. I'm like, Devon, let's do this. Let's pick up the pace a little bit, pal. And I did bump it up. I'm listening to it at, like, 2.15 times the speed. And it's not fast at all. It's not even a little bit fast. But, anyway, I am hopefully going to get a little bit more of this read tonight. And then, hopefully an hour or two of it tomorrow before the hold runs out and I have to start reading it physically. But other than that, that's a good night to whatever day this is of this vlog. Phenomenal, stunning, beautiful, gorgeous, inspiring. I'm not even done with it yet, okay? I can't even imagine my, what my review is going to be like. I am on page 338, I think, and that is when my Libby hold on the audio ended up expiring. So today, while I was at work, I had my headphone in while I was doing side work and was listening to it, and I literally kept telling people, I was like... You guys are nice, but go away. Like, I need to listen to this book. And I was seriously, like, doing, like, roll-ups, like, silver roll-ups and polishing, going, oh, my God. And somebody would be like, oh, she's talking about that book. I'm like, oh! <laughs> like, visually and verbally reacting. Because, oh, my God. It's so good. It's so good. It's like, I kept thinking. I was like, how is this going to end? Like, it's so good. Like, in the first, like, 5%, 10%, 20%. 40%, 50%. I was like, oh my God, I don't understand how this is going to end that it could be better than what's happening now. I still don't know how it's going to end. I don't know what's going to happen, but oh my God, every time I think we've peaked, we get another layer. It's so good. Like the get out quality, like there is no better description of this book than get out meets Gossip Girl. It's literally like if you took the cast of Gossip Girl and then all the vibes of get out and like the plot of get out basically... I, I, I don't even know what to say. It's like, there's so many things that I want to talk about. So many things I want to talk about. And I, maybe I'll do a spoiler section after, like I finish the book, but oh dear God, it's so good. And when I went to work today, there was two girls that I went up to and I was like, they, they read, um, like they don't have like channels or anything, but they read a lot. And I was like, read this book. I, I can't even tell you what it's about. It's just gossip girl meets get out. Please read it. And they were like, Oh, okay. And I was like, no, no, I'm serious. Please, please read this book. It's so good. Like, I know they're going to love it. I know they will. And I want to talk about it with them so bad. And I'm literally like, I've got to shoot Grace a text and be like, bro, now is the moment. Now, no, she is the moment. Like, this is, I haven't even finished the book yet. That's the thing. But my Libby audio um, book ran out. So I still have this much to physically read which like physical reading for me this will probably take like two days um but i guess i'll just i guess i'll hit you up when i'm done with it like there's ugh, i cannot pop in again before this book is done like i need to just wait and get it all out in my review i'm gonna try to do that This book, this book is simultaneously making me feel like I'm too paranoid and that I'm exactly the right amount of paranoid because every time I'm paranoid about something, I'm right. I'm right. <laughs> but oh my God, the level of fuckery that is happening in this book is astronomical. I hate this guy so much, like viscerally, viscerally. I hate this guy. Whew. Oh my god, I knew 
it! Oh my god, I knew it! Oh no! Oh fuck, it's like I'm excited because I was right, but then I'm also terrified because it's so scary and then also sad because this is so fucked up. Oh my god, this is so fucked up. Oh my god. Yes. Yes. God, that's horrible to say that, but God bless. Oh! Revenge is best served dead, bitch. Chiamaka! Oh my god. Chiamaka is that bitch. Chiamaka is that bitch. Oh my god. I'm gonna read the author's note before I literally start losing my mind about this book. Hold on. She's only in college? And she wrote this masterpiece. How, how, how? I hope that in reading this story, you see that despite the darkness we are plagued with, which often feels inescapable, that not only are happy endings possible for black people, but that we deserve them. With love, Farida. Oh my God, is that it? Is that it? Is that it? This book, I'm struggling to think of something that's not perfect about this book. I'm struggling to say that there's a single line of dialogue in this. There's a single exposition that is not perfection. Like this very easily is a favorite of all time for me. Very easily. Five out of five stars. No being doubt about it. Everything that everybody says about it is right. It's phenomenal. I, I'm gonna have to hit you back up like maybe later tonight or something with like more thoughts because right now I'm just like <gasps> high on emotions. Oh my God. Oh my God. What do I have to do? What do I have to do to get you to read this? Hello? Hello? Are you, are you, um, are you looking me in the eye? What do I have to do? It's stunning. It's flawless. It's amazing. Let's talk about how well this stood up to this video. It can only be downhill from here. It can only be downhill from this book. This is a stunning success. Grace killed it. I literally called her and I was like, five stars. And she was like, I'm adding it right now. And I was like, no, 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 no. Do not put it on Libby. Buy this book. She was like, oh, oh shit, really? I was like, buy it. Go on Libro, buy this audio. And she was like, Okay, and I said, I would offer you to read the physical book, but this is a book that I truly think is better as an audiobook. And it's not because, oh, there's like sound effects or whatever, like not because of that, but because I don't know why, but I read, obviously, ended up shockingly finishing like a hundred something pages of it in one sitting, which is for me astronomical, but I actually enjoyed the audio experience more than physically reading it. And I think it's because um, one, largely because I am a white girl and I am reading these words as a white woman and hearing the narrators who are a black woman and a black man reading a black woman and a black man's voice was different to me because I was reading this like as an outsider, but listening to it at, like a story from someone who knew what they were talking about was very different. And I also think that the narrator, the way that they narrate it, and the way that you can't skip ahead because there's so many plot twists, I kept being like this reading it because I kept accidentally spoiling myself. But the narrators have such an amazing way of like not giving anything away and like really having it be such a twist. Like you're like, oh my God, like it was so good. And the eeriness of this, like this has such atmospheric creep in it. Like it's so creepy. It's so eerie. Like it's so get out where you're like, no, no, don't do it. Oh my God, you're not really going to do that. And then they do. What? Oh my God, it's so good. Like, I don't want to give anything away. I really don't. There's so many things that I want to talk about. And I'm like, okay. One thing that I knew was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. And I'm not going to spoil it. I'm just going to say, like, if you've read this book, you'll know. 
But when they're at the ball, the masks, I knew it. I knew it like way before they even mentioned that there was going to be a ball because these characters are reminding me so much of Bonnie and Caroline from the Vampire Diaries. I was thinking of like the Miss Mystic Falls, like whenever they had that masquerade ball, I was like, what if they do that? And they did! Anyway, I fucking loved it. I think, okay, listen, this is something I want to tell you. I am not the person that can speak about um, racial representation. I'm not. Like I said before, I'm a white woman in the South. What do I know? Not shit. Like if that's something that, there are so many booktubers and bookstagrammers and book bloggers and so many book reviewers that you could reach out to, that you could look at their content, that you could search out, that you should for speaking about representation and own voices and all like the cultural eccentricities and nuances of this book that are not me. I'm not the one who's going to give you a fantastic, actual, logical, real review about this book. I'm not. I know that. And I am I want you to know that. I'm sure most of you do know that, that, that if I said, I think that this was really, really amazing racial representation, what do I know? Nothing. I'm saying that on a huge assumption. I'm assuming this has amazing racial representation. I think that this has more representation than most any book that I have read before when it comes to the black experience, but that is just because it's more of it. I don't know if it is accurate because I'm white. Do you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I loved it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I think Chiamaka is so that bitch. Like I love that she's a character that was written because she is like designed after Blair Waldorf from the Go from Gossip Girl who is a very flawed character, who is a very stuck up character, rich character, um, like egotistical character. And that's who Chiamaka is. And she's so intensely so. She is so unwaveringly so. And it's so amazingly done. I just absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic. The amount of queerness in this book, I did not see coming. Truly did not see coming. Absolutely adored it. I feel like I need to stop talking because I'm going to just start saying things that should not be said. But if you're wondering if you should read this book, do it. They're going to make, they have to make a movie out of this. They have to make a movie out of it. They have to. It's so good. It's got to be like, get out. But like, YA. I'm so excited. Anyway, glowing five out of five stars. This is Audible. Recorded books and RB Digital present Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. Narrated by Maura Quirk. Dramatis Personae. In order of house appearance. The Ninth House. Keepers of the Locked Tomb, House of the Sown Tongue, the Black Vestals. Herahark Nonagesimus, heir to the House of the Ninth, Reverend Daughter of Dreaba. Peliamina Novenarius, her mother, Reverend Mother of Dreaba. Priam Hark Nonius Vianus, her father, Reverend Father of Dreaba. Autos Nigonad, Cavalier Primary to the Heir. Crux, Marshal of the House of the Ninth. Iglamine, Captain of the Guard of the Ninth. Sister Lacrimorta, Nun of the Locked Tomb. Sister Isomorta, Nun of the Locked Tomb. Sister Glorica, Nun of the Locked Tomb. Some various followers, cultists, and lay people of the Ninth, and Gideon Nav, indentured servant of the House of the Ninth. The First House. Yo, I'm reading Gideon the Ninth. I am on page 60. I am listening to the audiobook and following along with it physically because it's dense. Like, let me show you how many words are in each page. I sound so stupid for saying that. Like, can I even read a book? Uh, but... It's very dense. The chapters are long. There is not spacing between the chapters really at all. It's very dense. It's, I don't, I'm, I don't know what high fantasy is, but like, it's definitely a higher fantasy than like Akatar. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's a lot going on, but I'm liking it. I'm not sure how I feel about the way that like Gideon talks because she is like, she's like the character that's like, shove it up your ass. Like that's how she talks. Or she's just like, um, very sarcastic, like dry, snarky, and I'm not sure if I love it or if it's too much. Like, I don't know yet, but there's been one thing. Oh, also why I just have my fist in this plant pot is because I am trying to paint this plant pot that my mom gifted me for Easter. And I mixed up, while I'm listening to it, I mixed up some like pastel colors. I don't like pastel, so I don't know why I'm doing it in pastel, but you know what? We're going to see. I have no plan. Just see if I like it. And then hopefully pop a plant in there. We'll find out. Um, hopefully I'll hit you up later today with what this book is about because I still am quite confused.
I actually ended up going to the beginning of Gideon the Ninth. I got to like page 150, which took like five hours because there's a lot of words on each page. Did I talk about that? Um, I ended up going back to the beginning because I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Like what is happening? The world is like totally different than ours. There's this whole magical system. There's a whole bunch of characters. It's very confusing. There's a lot of stuff going on, which is great. The author clearly has a whole plan. She's got a whole thing going on. Love that for her, but I want to love it for myself. And I'm not able to do that right now, especially because while I was listening to it, I did get the news that my roommate um, is going to move out and I can't afford to live here by myself. So I have to figure that out. I have like two months or something. I don't know, but it's very stressful. I'm a very habitual person and I can't even begin to imagine like not living here and moving and I've never lived alone and I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. So we're just kind of stressed. You know what I'm saying? We're just like kind of stressed. I'm going to be stressed until I move. And like two months after that, I'm going to, oh my God, finding a new grocery store. That is so scary. I hate that. I hate finding new grocery stores and like how far, like what gas station I want to go to and like how far away is the target? Like, is there a half price books there? Is there little free libraries? Can I walk around the neighborhood and not be afraid? Like I just have a lot of things that I need to be in line for my life to go smoothly. Anyway, what is Gideon the Ninth about? Also this camera angle. Let's talk about it. Anyway, um, Gideon the Ninth, what is it about? I'm going to try to tell you because it's going to be confusing because I'm confused, but I'm going to try. So I got to chapter 14. I went back to chapter one. Now I'm on chapter three. So what I can gather is it is set on a planet called the ninth. And I guess there's nine planets. It might be the planets of our solar system. I don't know about that, but it seems like it would make sense if that were the case. But there's nine different planets and something has occurred. I don't know if it's on every planet or if it's just on the ninth, but something has happened that like everyone has died or like most everybody's dead. Don't know why. Can't parse that out yet. But I might have to Google that because I swear the first time and the second time I'm listening to this, I I can't figure it out. But something has happened. A lot of people have died, but a lot of people on um, all these planets are necromancers, but they all have like different skills. And the, the ninth, their big thing is bone magic, or maybe it's not the ninth, but like Harrow, who is the princess of the ninth, her big thing is bone magic. So she can make all these skeletons get up and move. So it's basically like a bunch of just reanima- reanimated skeletons. And then Harrow and Gideon and like one other character and then everyone else is just a reanimated skeleton like it's freaking wild and I'm like what and then also so Harrow is like the princess and then Gideon is like a bastard like she's Gideon Knave and Knave is like a bastard's name kind of like how Jon Snow is in the Hunger Games so she doesn't really know where she came from but she's not a necromancer but she is really skilled with a sword and that comes into play because I don't know what happens but there's like some decree that goes out. I'm very confused about the decree. I'm like almost to that part in the book again, but there's this decree that goes out that says, hey, we're rounding up all your best and brightest necromancers from all nine planets to come and like compete, I guess, to like become a lecture. Gonna have to get back to you on that. To become like ascend to be like this like head necromancer, I guess. I don't know, but Harold really wants it. And to compete, she has to have a cavalier, which is like a protector, I guess. And there's basically no one else to ask except Gideon. So she has to force Gideon to do this with her. And I don't really understand the competition. I don't get it. Hopefully reading it again, it will all make sense. I don't know. Oh my God. But let me show you that I did finish this little guy I was working on earlier. So I accidentally started putting black around the edges and then hated that. Tried to cover it up. Didn't work. So that's just going to go in the back. And then I know it came with the little rope, but the rope was too short. So I put this one and it's even cuter. And look at that. It's cute. Now, let me go freak out again about moving. 
I am going to do exactly what I did to combat anxiety and everything when this whole panorama hit and we were locked down. And that was that I painted everything and I put these freaking handles on everything and I um, painted the countertops. And now that it's like a year later and I'm gonna move out, part of me is like, was this all a bad idea? But then I was like, no, because I needed a project and I did it. So now I'm gonna do the same project and that is undoing all the hardware that I put in things. I mean, I know that it's not like I'm moving tomorrow or anything and I have no idea where I'm going and what I'm doing and ha <laughs> Anyway, um, I'm just gonna take out some of these knobs. Not all of them, I don't think, but. You know, I'm remembering the book that I was listening to when I put these knobs in, these like the kitchen ones was uh, Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered, the My Favorite Murder book. And then the book that I was listening to when I painted my bedroom was The Stranger Beside Me. The book I was listening to when I painted my bathroom was Station Eleven. Oh my God, what else? Those are the ones that are like sticking in my brain. That's so wild. That's like my memory of doing that was those books. And then I guess the memory of doing this will be Gideon the Ninth. It's midnight now. I got to chapter 11. But other than that, let's move swiftly past this because I was on the phone with a coworker for two hours. Because people are getting fired at my job, y'all. This girl's like, I walked out of my shift. I was like, and if you're a server, you know, when you get that text, I walked out of my shift. I was like, call me right now. Call me. And she was like, he's getting fired. I will make sure of it. I was like, girl, sign me up. Put my name on the back of the paper. Like, sign my name too. Put my John Hancock. I'm there for you, girl. You know, I mean, if you work in the service industry, you already know. You already know. That text, I walked out of my shift. I was like, put the book on mute and was like, talked to her for two hours. It was freaking great. <sighs> the service industry is wild. What's going on in this book? Um, I still don't understand the competition that's going on. Like, I don't get this whole thing. I don't know if it's like, I think it's that they're all competing to be lictors. It's like L-Y-C-T-O-R, lictors, lictors. I don't know what that means. I think it's like head necromancers. They're like priests kind of almost. Everybody that's read this book is probably like, what are you talking about? Um, they're competing for that, but I, I don't think it's that they're competing against each other. I think it's that um, whoever gets through it, like whoever passes to become a lictor, it's like, great, cool, you passed. But they know that a lot of people won't and that some might even die in the process. So that's wild. Um, there's this girl there that's like representing like House Seventh or something like that. Um, or like, yeah, House Seventh that is really sick and dying. And I'm like, what is going on? What is happening? Also, why did everybody die and turn into skeletons? I have no idea. Other things that I've been doing is obsessively doing random things to my apartment. Let me show you. This is what I do when I have anxiety and stress. This is what I do. So... I, you can already tell, this is different from before. I took off the knobs. I didn't, you know, I didn't do the greatest job of all time. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. But I took the knobs off. I sanded it down, filled it with whatever the heck that stuff is. Painted over it. Thought it would look better than this. It doesn't. It's totally fine. I just randomly went through these cabinets. Wow, that one looks really bad. Went through these cabinets and like pulled a bunch of crap out of there. And this is a bunch of stuff that I'm gonna get rid of because I was like, I don't need it. Like, I'm not gonna like take this with me when I move. I'm not moving for like three months, but <laughs> hey. And then also I did the bathroom. So I, wow, it looks even worse. It's totally fine, it's totally fine. I did that, I cleaned the floor, put the mats back down, did this, painted it, the whole bit. Wow, I need to, I need to make a margarita. That's what I'm going to do. I don't know if I want to read any more of the book tonight. I might just watch YouTube videos because I'm really high strung right now and I need to calm down. This is insane. Oh my fucking God. They messed up her name. No. Ah! Look at her eye staring at me is the creepiest part. Look at the eye. Oh God. She's, she's not asleep. That's for oh, sure. Oh shit. Her hair is going to catch on fire. Oh my God. What if it does? <laughs> 
<laughs> and those bottles have alcohol in them. This is so dangerous. Oh yeah, didn't think about it. Not gonna lie to you. We'll just keep it rolling. <laughs> oh, we got. Like, we'll just sit like this. Oh my video. god, your your drink is gonna explode and pop. <laughs> I was literally been waiting to hear come from your car. <laughs> oh good lord. Hey. <laughs> Hi. What's up? This one, I know this is very weird. Who's who? <laughs> Who's who? Am I Katie? The shadows are very confusing <laughs> for all of us. <laughs> I'm Grace. Um, what's up? How you doing? How's your night been? I'm looking at you and I'm telling you, you're beautiful. Mm. Stunning. <laughs> Gorgeous. Not as much as us, but still up there. Anyway, guess what we're both doing? We're both reading Gideon the Ninth. I'm on chapter 14. Grace is on chapter eight, which is like, oh my gosh, just flipped to chapter nine. <laughs> like that. So she is working her way up. We've been talking about it. The book is so complicated. Yeah. It's I, dense. I had to take some photos of the descriptions of the different, what is it, houses? Yeah, yeah. It's like Game of Thrones. Like they it have. Very Game of Thrones. It's like <laughs> what she said, Game of Thrones in space. It is! <laughs> Lesbian Game of Thrones in space. Thank God we're not switching character point of views because I could not handle that. No. Too much information. Absolutely not. We are, we're loving it, but we are also like, what the fuck is happening? I literally told her, I said, I don't know what they're after, why they want it, or how they're going to get it, but I'm here. Yeah. Digging it. Um, also, I got a email today from a girl named Marisol. And she sent me the audiobook for Misery, which was one of the books that Grace wanted me to read, which I don't know if I'm going to read it for this video or not. Maybe we'll do it separately. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a part two. <gasps> I don't know. Um, but she said, don't read it until you get a box in the mail for me. So I have three different um, packages. This one is heavy as shit. Oh, these are batteries. Well, nah. that's awkward. I bought those for myself. I only had one more battery for my insulin pump. I was like, mm -hmm. Katie, what are you doing? Grace, would you mind um, unboxing this for me? Ooh, okay. Ooh. Oh. Would it be? Oh my God. I'm excited. Oh shit, what is it? Okay, she already told me about... <laughs> I told you that's hot as shit. I told you that's hot as shit. How did somebody already know? I haven't even put this vlog out yet. That is, that is prime gay hotness. Mm. That is another level. A gift for you. Hey Katie, I saw you had volume one on your August TBR and thought you would want a second volume right away. Anyway, love your channel and all of its glory. Hope you enjoy from Cassie. Oh my God. She's totally right because I added that to my wish list the second I finished volume one and she, which was like two days ago. So she fucking killed it and I cannot wait to read volume I two. I loved hearing about that one. Honestly, I'm like not that much into comic books, but that shit sounded hot. You it would love it. really good. It is hot. I love Arrivals to Lovers. Are we opening this yes. big ass faucet package? Okay. All right. Tell us what we've won, Grace. Uh, what is this? Oh my God. It's a card inside a pouch. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, we love watching your videos. We wanted to make reading this book a little bit more interactive. The red bag items can be opened right away. After that, you can open the black wrapped gift that is labeled open first. Once you decide to read the book, you can open the rest on the page given. The green tabs will remind you to open the package. You bring us so much joy, so we wanted to do something fun for you. Let us know how it went. Oh my god, I love this. We have to make a whole video out of this. Exactly, I love this. This has to be a whole video. I'm gonna have video. to get the audio like ASAP. Marisol. ASAP. Excuse me? That's freaking stunning. Okay, so, um. I'm kind of jealous. I wish I had thought of this. That's I know so this romantic. is such a tease. This is such a tease. But, um, you're gonna have to tune back in to watch this misery vlog that Grace and I are gonna do together. So we're not gonna show you what the rest of this is in this package. I'm so sorry. I know this is so annoying, um, but too bad. We can do whatever we want. So we are going to open the rest of this on that vlog. Sorry. Hey, awkward. I'm sure you could already tell probably from the title of this video, but me when I was filming it, had no idea this was gonna be in two parts, okay? Um, I have finished all three of the books, uh, did till last night, and when I was uploading some of the footage, I realized that even with editing, this vlog would be like an hour and 40 minutes. 
Yeah, see, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can do an hour long vlog, okay? But I'm not gonna ask you guys to sit through like a Tolkien feature length film of me talking. I'm not gonna do that to you. That's a little too much, okay? Like an hour of me talking, especially with how fast I talk, is already like a lot. Two hours? No. Mm -mm -mm. So awkwardly, I'm breaking in right now to tell you that there is going to be a part two. And don't worry, it's probably going to come out on Thursday, uh, like two days from now. So you won't have long to wait. Um, but I did finish Ace of Spades in this video. And this was five stars. This absolutely not only met my expectation, but it soared above my expectation. So, so good. Oh my god. <sighs> Bless. This is fantastic. And then, sorry as I just dive out of frame. What is under here? A bookmark. What's up? Uh, Gideon the Ninth. I got halfway through this. And then in the next video, I will be finishing Gideon the Ninth and also reading in its entirety, They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. So that's what we're planning on doing. If you have got this far into the video, leave the timer emoji because I swear I need to like start setting a timer for when I start talking. Am I going to do it? No. And I also need to write down how long the clips are that I'm filming so that when I go to add them up, I'm like, that's 45 minutes. Okay. You have no idea how much I cut out of my videos too. Like a lot. And you know, my B-roll only lasts for like 20 seconds. Why do I talk so much? I should be wearing my Gemini necklace right now. Anyway, leave the timer emoji. Let me know if you have read Ace of Spades and why you gave it five stars, because I will not accept any lower of a rating. I mean, I do want to hear the discussion. Like, if you guys rated it anything other than five stars, let me know why. And if you listen to the audio or read the physical book, because that is very interesting to me, let me know down below. And then also let me know what you rated and if you've read Gideon the Ninth and They Never Learn. And then we'll check back in the next video and see if you agree with my review. So anyway, I hope you're having an amazing day, evening, night, dusk, dawn, whatever it is you're having. And I will see you in part two coming very soon. Bye.